I think we've hit the limits to growth. Over the past couple of years, the evidence of uh, global oil production peak is, has been accumulating. Uh, demand for oil, even though it was growing from 2005 through 2008, production of oil didn't grow to meet that demand, and that's why oil prices rose to the stratosphere. And now we're in kind of a balancing act where the, um, the price that's required in order for oil companies to develop new production capacity is almost up to the price level that will kill the economy. I mean, we know every time there's an oil price spike, it results in economic recession. It's happened again and again over the last 40 years. And we saw the same thing back in 2008. Well, now, um, the, the, the difference between the economy killing price and the price that's necessary in order to keep the whole oil industry operating is they're, they're almost the same. When that happens, uh, there's, you know, the, our leeway virtually vanishes and, uh, and the economy becomes hostage to oil prices in effect. Now, again, that's just a symptom of peak oil. This is, uh, this is what we should actually expect to happen, not just with oil, but with every important resource as it becomes scarce. The, the, the market's ability to deal with resources becomes, it, it goes haywire as, as scarcity takes over and prices become more volatile and, uh, and economic activity becomes uh, more and more uh, challenged by the by the price environment, so this suggests to me that we've actually hit the first important limit to growth, and that in turn means that we may have seen the last of economic growth, as we've come to know it. Now and that's not to suggest we won't see a single month or quarter or maybe even year or two of growth relative to the previous month or quarter or year. But if you average out the bumps, where we're going from now on is probably flat or declining as opposed to you know, the ever upward march of, of GDP that we saw during the last few decades. And that has enormous implications because all of our uh, corporations, all of our banks and, and, uh, and governmental institutions are basing their uh, their future on the assumption of continued growth. And they're, uh, they're not designed to operate functionally in, in absence of economic growth. I mean, look at what's happening with, with uh, state budgets and revenues. Uh, without economic growth, there's not enough tax revenue to provide for the state budgets. And so how do states respond? By cutting services. Well, the assumption is we can do this for you know, a few months, maybe a year or two, until the economy gets back to normal, which means, again, uh, continuous growth. Well, what happens if the economy doesn't get back to normal? Uh, at the state level, at the federal level, for the airline industry, for the uh, industrial agriculture, all across the board, uh, everything goes haywire without continuous economic growth. So it's, it's essential that we grasp the reality of our situation and start planning for a, uh, a stable, non-growing economy, because that's what, that's what we have. It's, we have to face reality and adjust accordingly. Otherwise, we, we attempt to continue living in a fantasy world, but that just doesn't work after a while. You know, sooner or later, reality intrudes on our fantasy, and uh, and it does so, unfortunately, in some in some pretty nasty ways.